Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Try to help you. Yes, how was uh, first day of training camp, and specifically, how did the quarterbacks look on uh, first day of camp? First day was good. Uh, you know, we're in shorts and uh, helmets, but um, real good energy. We have a, a senior, experienced team. They're leading the team, so it's fun to to watch them run the squad. Um, Coaches did a really good job in their preparation, so now you're off and running. Uh, quarterbacks, they, I thought they had a good day. Um, you know, good command of what we're doing. We're not doing a whole bunch, but good command of what we're doing. So you can only judge them on what we have in. So, yeah, it was a good day. After a lot of predictions and talking last week, does it just feel good to be back out there? And yeah, it just feels good every time you get to go. It's my favorite time of year. There's, uh, there's nothing else going on. There's no school. There's no girlfriends, no families. It's just us. It's our family. It's our football family, and we get to we get to meet. We get to walk through. We get to practice. We get to eat together. Uh, I think each each team is formulated in the summer, and then in training camp. And as I've said many times, you have to have a great winter to have an opportunity to have a great spring. You have to have a great spring to have an opportunity to have a great summer. And then you have to have a great summer to have an opportunity to have a great training camp. And if you can have a great training camp, you can have a pretty, if you can go four for four, then you can have a pretty good season. Right now we're three for three, so we need to make sure this is a great training camp. Malcolm Ray, someone you brought in from Florida State through the transfer portal on the defensive line, veteran guy, just having that uh, kind of player with his you know, experience and, and what he's done there, just what, what kind of a boost do you think that'll be for the defensive line? Well, we, you know, as I've told you before, we used the portal to fill needs. We felt we had a need, and uh, Malcolm was the perfect guy for our scheme. He's become part of our team. We, you know, we're different. We do things in, differently than Florida State. So he needed to get into our groove. And uh, over the course of the spring and summer and winter, he did that. And he looks at home now. Um, you kind of alluded to this when you said that the seniors are kind of leading the way. And we've talked a lot over the last couple of years about kind of filling that pipeline. As that's happened, how do you feel like that's kind of manifested itself on the practice field in terms of intensity, competition, and, and kind of how have you seen that ascension over the last couple of years? You know, oftentimes things don't get to the staff. They're taken care of by the players beforehand. But if it does get to the staff, there's immediately uh, guys that are uh, there to pick them up and let's go. Let's get this. This not, you know, because th th there's no one thing about our program is it's very, very clear what's expected. The standard is the standard. And nothing else will be accepted. So if someone drip, dips below it, uh, it's going to get noticed and called out. And uh, then it's up to everybody to get it get it fixed. What's the biggest thing that stood out to you about this wide receiver group so far? And what do you hope to see through training camp? Well, to start, I think we have some real competition, some real depth in the room. And now they got to go compete. And uh, you, know, you, you win, you compete, and you earn your touches. And as a receiver, you can never really guarantee that the ball's going to come to you because the coverage has something to say about that. But there is a guarantee. If you're not on the field, you can't catch the ball. So that's the competition that uh, is important. I guess just to continue on the wide receivers, what, what's part of your process for evaluating who gets the touches and like how do you kind of – Performance. Uh, yeah. yeah, strictly. Everything here. If you give us the best chance to win, you're going to be the first receiver. Second best chance, you're the second. Third best, third, all the way down. We usually get, you know, seven to eight guys ready to go each week. So, you know, that's the battle right now to be one of those seven or eight that are, quote, unquote, up. What are your expectations of Ethan Kelly McManus this season, and what are the specific areas you hope that he improves uh, from quarterback play from years past? Yeah, expectations are like they are for every player, to be the best player that he can be every day. Go out and chop the moment every day. I don't, I don't really get into the results. The results usually take care of themselves. As long as the process, the effort, the focus is right, everything else will take care of itself. And I'm, I'm confident Nathan's going to do that. That's who he is. You have eight returning starters on defense coming into this year. How does that set the tone for training camp? Because you guys had one of the best defensive units in the country last year. Well, uh, there's high expectations. They know that. We know that. Um, but that, what we did in the past means nothing today. You know, you have to chop the moment today. And that's what uh, the entire group of them are talking about, and that's what the coaching staff's talking about. We've, you know, expanded things a little bit, deleted some other things. 
uh, through study. So, you know, there's enough new stuff to keep it. But we always talk about a beginner's mentality. I don't care how many years you've been doing it. You enter meeting one, you should be taking notes as if you're a freshman or rookie. And uh, that's that's the standard. Time for two more. With a guy like Kyle Manungai, who obviously, I don't know if I'm saying that, you know, he took a lot of teams by surprise last year is the right way to put it, but definitely is more expectations on him, more eyeballs on him. How does his training camp, how does his preparation kind of have to change, or does it have to change going into a season when it's so much more, you know, higher expectations? Yeah, that's a good question, Chris, and I think you're right. He did come out of nowhere. I mean, there was no expectations for Kyle Manungai. I was watching a game, like a mid-season game, and he might have been fifth or sixth in the league in rushing. And you hear the color commentators talking about him if he's just another guy. And then you watch a game four or five weeks later, and they're talking, oh, here's the top rusher in the league. And, you know, that's the nature of sport, right? I mean, everybody does this. Uh, Kyle doesn't need to change his preparation one bit. He's an elite preparer, and he needs to continue to be an elite preparer. So what's, you know, incrementally, can he get that much better? Yeah. And that's what we try to do every day is go out and just – if you chop the moment, you're going to get better. If you start looking at your results, that's when you start to trip. Next question. Uh, big picture in the future, it seems like uh, roster construction is going to be a, a big deal with all the changes that are coming. Mm. Number 105 has been floated a little bit in terms mm -hmm. of uh, a roster cap. What does that mean for Rutgers, and what's just your overall opinion on walk-ons uh, and how that's affected by what would be a 105? Yeah, it's part of a much bigger – decision right Patrick but it is a great question because it's going to change a lot and I'm, I'm really disappointed um, I think it's just it's awful because you look at walk-on football players they've been such a critical part of the game of college football there's so many great traditions and then look at our program right we have a wall outside our weight room captain walk-ons that became captains and several of them went on and played in the NFL. I mean, Gary Brackett, what a story. I mean, captain of the Indianapolis Colts Super Bowl championship team, right? It was a walk on here. But you go down the list, Sean O'Hara, right? Tremendous player. Multiple Super Bowl rings. Walk on. You know, people will say, well, there's 105 roster limit and you can give scholarships up to 105 if that goes through. I'm not sure those guys would have gotten a scholarship if it was 105. Right? I mean, that's where I get a kick out of everybody who thinks this recruiting is a science. It's more of an art form than a science. You're dealing with young people that are developing. So, you know, when I was 16, you were 16, and you were 16, we all had different levels of maturation. It changes. Some guys bloom late. And um, those guys will not have the opportunity to do it at this level. Now, that they will go down in level now. There'll be a, you know... I think our roster is somewhere in the one thir low 130s. So you do the math, right? That's 29, you know, 28, 27 guys that will not have the opportunity to be at Rutgers and play Rutgers football. And that to me is, uh, I just am sad about it. But I understand the bigger, I understand what's going on. I'm not naive, but I just wish it didn't have to be that way. It's a fallout of the big picture, right? It's an unaccepted consequence of the... Yeah, I guess it's an unintended consequence. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I wish, again, I'm living in Pollyanna world here. I wish all of this, I've said it so many times. Back in 2001, I, I, I wanted players to be able to get paid. Instead, we couldn't give them cream cheese with their bagels, right? I mean, like, that's... If we could have done this together, collaborated on it, and done it in a smart way, we wouldn't find ourselves here. But it's, it's been a stubbornness and an elitist attitude that now, you know what, you're getting told what to do. So it's a shame. Uh, but again, you know, I've said to you guys many times, if you don't like it, dot, 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 change it or change the way you think about it. Well, I can't personally change it or I would. The only way I can change it is stop coaching. Well, I love coaching. I love being at Rutgers, so I'm not going to do that. So i got to change the way I think about it. So all I've been doing now is it's heading to 105 is start thinking about, okay, how are we going to – what's our strategy to make Rutgers the best program we can at 105? That's all I can do right now. I wish I could change it, Pat, but I can't. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks.